unheard of. Welcome back, everybody, to another great week here at Unheard Of. It's me, your man, with the beard, Jared Ray Evans. And to the left side of your screen, my great co-host and great friend, now the beardless ABG. How you been this week? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you know, it's uh, Easter week, so happy Easter to, or I hope you had a happy Easter to everybody who's uh, watching. We're actually recording this on Easter, so you guys will be listening or watching uh, on Monday or whenever through your week, so I hope you had a good one. And, um, yeah, it's been working, doing a whole lot of driving, and that's pretty much it, man. What about you? How's your week been? Been pretty good. Um, you know, we've been really busy. We had family come in, uh, my brother Colton and his wife, Chris and Brooke. We had a nice good time with them. Getting ready for more family to come in here in a couple both, days. Uh, both uh, Colton, Colton and KB, friends of the show, been on the show. Yeah. Would like to have them back. And um, so it was nice having them in town. And now we will have my mom come in with Molly and Hunter here in a day or a couple days. Um, and other than that, I know a lot of people think that, hey, your boy Jared is the conservative one on this show when it comes to, like, COVID and everything else. But, you know, I'm the only one, supposedly, right. that's gotten his vaccine first. All right. Uh, and I'm out here in Colorado where eligibility just opened up for me. Eligibility in Georgia's been out there for a while for old ABG in Georgia. But uh, we got our first vaccine, Tiff and I, um, this past Saturday. We got the Moderna shot. Um and we've already got it scheduled for the the second one, so been pretty man, productive. I've just been I've just been busy, man. Like I don't know, I feel like I just don't have a lot of time. But I I need to I definitely need to get it in. My whole family is already vaccinated and everything, and I'm just the only one. Dude, so. literally this past Saturday, we got up, we took the kids to like an Easter egg hunt with a helicopter drop and whatever. And then immediately we drove to like a drive through vaccination site because we had appointments. And as soon as we got done with that, we came back home, did an Easter hunt for the kids at the house. Uh, so we're pretty busy too, but I made the appointment because I was like, well, eligibility just opened up and we wanted to go ahead and get our vaccines. I know, man. That's nice. Uh, tell me more about that helicopter drop though, what? Supposedly, and apparently they did this when we lived in Virginia, too, at different places. I just didn't pay attention to it, I guess, but Tiff knew about it. Um, they're, it's called an egg drop, like for the kids. And what they do is they bring a helicopter to, like, an open field, and um, they literally, like, drop, you know, Easter eggs from the helicopter into this field, and then the kids just go hunt. So, like, how high is it? I mean, how how low is it flying, the the it it gets okay. really it gets really low um i don't know if tiff will post it but there's a video where the helicopter starts to get low because it's about to drop the eggs and the grass is just flying everywhere like and i'm holding yeah. trace because he's like trying not to get grass in his face or anything anymore so we're like all turned to the side and uh <laughs> i wasn't expecting to get all that grass in my face but they said the uh, church that was putting this on, they're like, hey, everybody get close to the fence because as soon as they drop these eggs, we're going to let y'all go. But, uh, yeah, it, it got kind of messy. Like, grass was flying everywhere. And... The, uh, how the boys like it? How they do at the at the, at the the helicopter drop one? Uh, it actually wasn't that – the Easter egg hunt wasn't that good. They – so it was really crowded. And, I mean, I'm in Colorado, and uh, people are wearing masks all the time anyways. But literally, uh, I guess everybody's getting ready to go back to normal with getting their vaccines and everything. We go to this place, and it's just like shoulder to shoulder. You know, <laughs> there is a crowd of people uh, trying to let their kids have a good time. There's inflatables. Uh, so it, it was a really fun time. But the church is brand new, so I'm not sure if they knew uh, what might happen if they drop eggs from a helicopter. Um <laughs> 
There was one entrance into the fence, so they weren't letting kids through in multiple areas. So by the time my kids got there, we got maybe like five, six pieces of candy. Um, and most of the eggs were broken because they didn't buy like indestructible eggs or tape them. <laughs> oh, so they like... <laughs> so the eggs are broken uh, from, from them dropping them from the helicopter. Yeah, like basically there's indestructible eggs you can buy for this type of event. Or you could tape the eggs. Um, but so they were pretty much all broke. We just looked for candy on the ground. And after that, the church, I guess, was expecting this to happen because there was a line of kids to get candy if they weren't able to like find them in the field. And so the boys still got some candy, but, uh, I, I think that, I think that event will probably go better next year. It was put on by like a brand new church. So, yeah, the old, the old field candy up for Easter. But then, hey, they got they they at least got two Easter egg hunts. They got one when they got home too. So, yeah, I put like ten dollars, you know, in two golden eggs, so the boys can go get a toy or something. Nice. But um, back to your uh, vaccination. So how did how did the uh, shot make you feel? Did you have any uh, of the old side effects? No, I don't have any side effects. Um, Tiff and I. We're both pretty good. Uh, your arm is kind of like tender and sore, but you know that happens when I get like the flu vaccine for like the next day or two. Um, yeah, it's just normal, I guess, for us. Um, we haven't had any type of strange side effects, but um, my in-law, my brother-in-law, he uh, he had to get taken to the ER a couple of days ago because he had a reaction to the the first shot of his vaccine. Um, oh, wow. And I have somebody at work, um, and I'm not going to drop any names, but he basically told me that since he was on a different type of medication, he got his first shot, which was the same one I took from Moderna. And because he was taking a medication, uh, the vaccine had a crazy side effect, and he was in the hospital for like a few days. Jeez. Um. So if you're taking... Don't, my, don't let the anti-vaxxers hear you say that, dude. Well, most of these reactions are from people that take, like, daily medications. So you really want to be sure that you're checking out what you're taking and how it might react to the vaccine before you go and get it. Uh, you know, you can't predict everything, but, yeah, um, we're not on daily medications, like me and Tiff, so uh, no side effects. You know, we're doing pretty good. Just, the like, the spot's a little tender. Hmm. Yeah, um, some of our some of our friends uh, took it. The old the old uh, <clears throat> thought police boys, they uh, they took it. And Uriel said that like he got mad sick from it. Uh, well, depending on which one they get, like my grandmother, who's had vex, ha- uh, who's had COVID, they recently got their first shot too, and it did make her sick for a couple days, but. Uh, like I said, I don't know everybody's condition. I don't know if people are taking medications or if they've got other things going on. Some people have a reaction, but uh, no, this is day one after, and I'm doing pretty good. All right. Yeah, yeah I want to take mine on like a weekend, like on a Saturday, so I can have that day of just like if it if it does anything, I can just chill so I don't have to work. But um, maybe a Friday yeah. afternoon. Like a Friday afternoon might be good for you. Have the couple of days to recover, or whatever. That's true. That's true. Um. Yeah, you uh, you ready? To, you ready to get into this, this episode? Let's do it. All right. So first up, of course, we got episode three of <clears throat> Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And what did you think about it? I thought it was actually pretty good. Um. I think. I think basically the Avengers like straight up screwed. Uh, spoiler alert: they basically just straight up screwed Sharon Carter. <laughs> um, oh yeah. The fact that she's been non-blipped this entire time and <laughs> no pardons for her or nothing. Like she's just been having to live in this isolated country. I think. Um, I think her story's got more to it than what they're letting leading us to believe. Um, if I had to be honest. My early thoughts are that she is that uh, Sharon is the power broker that they're trying to find now. 
Um, and um, Zemo, you know, I read I read some articles that said they don't like this version of Zemo because he's more comical. Um, but I think he's still pretty cold. I mean, after they found that doctor and they were basically done with him, uh, you know, he straight up shot him in the face because he still hates super soldiers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, like, do they mean like, com like him, like his version from the comics or like funny? Like funny. I don't know. I, I wouldn't agree with that. I mean, he's, he's still, he's still the same, the same, uh, Zemo that we saw in, uh, Civil War. His, but yeah, his, his German accent is a little bit weaker than it is in Civil War, but, eh, I mean, I, I still like it. I like the version of his character. I do. I, I like his uh, mask, too. And, uh, I, like you said, after they found that doctor and um, Zemo just went into, like, badass mode and shot that uh, thing that made it blow up in front of people and just was, like, kicking ass and stuff, that was that was a good scene. That was a good scene for Zemo. And um, I thought it was really funny when <laughs> Bucky had freed uh, Zemo and he was just telling uh, Sam about it. They were just talking and he's like, well, let me give you a hypothetical. And he just <laughs> absolutely broke down everything that, that he did to get him out. Like that scene was really good too. I don't know. I, I think Zemo was, was, was shining on this episode. And to find out that he was like filthy rich. Yeah. I... I like I like when they can bring back good villains, you know, like yeah. Loki. Loki's been around for so long, but everybody loves him because he's a good villain. Um, so I like I like having Zemo in. And so with the uh, with the reveal of um, the like the King's Guard from Wakanda uh, showing up at the end, what do you think we're what do you think we're in for the for the next three episodes? Uh... God, I don't know because they still have to. They're I don't know if they're gonna address the whole T'Challa situation still, you know, uh, because you know when are they gonna place his death in the MCU timeline? Because technically they could address it with the next movie, and say that he went on you know some type of mission or something. He gets killed, um, but. I don't know. I'm really interested in bringing Wakanda into this storyline. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of action. I thought the scene at the beginning was funny with Wyatt Russell's, you know, new Captain America, where he gets spit on in the face. Oh, and yeah. He's like, do you know who I am? <laughs> yeah, like I was just like, I know who you are. I just don't care. Like, that's that's good, man. Like, that's That was basically like Marvel... Uh, agreeing with the fans, like <laughs> yeah, that's that's like what every fan wants to do to this Captain America right now, just like uh, spit right in his face. But um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, they they could talk about uh, T'Challa and and like this next episode because I mean, it, it that scene could have easily been T'Challa. Uh, if I mean, of course, if if without the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman that could have that could have been a nice little cameo for Black Panther yeah I think uh I don't know where they're gonna go into it I just know that obviously Bucky has his own roots in Wakanda now because of uh oh, yeah his time there between Civil War and all um he's a white wolf man yeah so he's got his connections uh I don't know I I really still like the show I just know that there's three episodes left and uh, Sam needs the shield. Yeah, I, I'm uh, very excited for whoever is going to actually pick up the Captain America mantle after this, or if they just let it die or what. Uh, no, nah. they're not going to let it die. They they've teased this way too much to just like slap in the fans' face. Yeah, it'll be Who one of the two. I would say, who do you think is gonna is gonna pick it up? I hope Sam. I mean, he seems like he seems like the right person to do it. You know, uh, he's no super soldier, but technically he doesn't have to be because he's got all his Falcon gear anyways. He could just use the the shield as like a side piece. 
Yeah. I don't know, man. I really just I want to see I want to see Bucky have it, man. Just I don't like know. to full to fully to fully uh encapsulate his his uh redemption, you know? His redemption arc. Uh good. You don't think that pissed a lot of people off of uh, you know, you don't think that pissed like a lot of people of color off? I uh, I mean maybe but like it is a tv show i mean I, like i i <laughs> i mean i just imagine i don't i don't i don't want to i don't want to sound like i'm i'm just like trying to justify my pick or or anything like that but i i, I get it for like a, a lot of young fans or like a lot of older fans people of color like we definitely would like to see his uh to see sam being captain america cuz i mean that would mean a lot to uh as you know representation uh, like especially like kids who, who watch it and they're like man i could be captain america like you know what i'm saying but i don't know this, i'm speaking more of just like a uh, just like a story uh way yeah i mean so i'm a really big fan of um the falcon and uh i really like uh wow god i don't know why his name just blanked right oh anthony mackie Anthony Mackie, yeah, yeah. Um, but I really like him, uh, especially a lot of the like action movies and series he's been in lately. I think if they were more focused on bringing, uh, you know, diversity into Marvel and focusing on like the other superheroes of color and everything else, then that seems like it would have been fine. You know, if Falcon started to get a bigger storyline, um, but they started to tease him in that shield like a lot. <laughs> yeah. And uh I just think that uh there would be a lot of people pissed if he doesn't end up with it. That's fair enough. I I just I mean, I also really like what they're doing with his character making him like he like he really doesn't want to to be Captain America because I don't know, I guess to him that that feels like it's just a a burden to well, like Zemo, like Zemo said, like them, they make him a legend, an icon, and stuff like that. And I, don't, and I don't think that Sam thinks that he is up for that kind of thing. I don't know if he views it as a burden. I think he's more so torn with the legacy behind it, especially now that he's uh, seen like Isaiah Wilson and the fact that they basically just used a black man to, uh, you know, as a test subject basically for the serum yeah. and. So I I don't know. It seems like he's confused uh, by the legacy of the Shield and Captain America. And I mean I'm not calling it a burden like uh, like I don't know in, in just like the burden sense of the word, but I meant like burden of like being looked at by a bunch of people as like you're Captain America. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean that 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 holds some weight to it. You know? And so yeah. that, so I. I get what you mean by the legacy bit. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I'm... Like, what? I, I was just going to say, I, I don't know. I, Bucky, I don't know. I just want... I, I don't know. I just want I just want to see Bucky be, be Captain America. My, I mean, it, it might be good. I don't know. I'm sure... I'm sure he would be fine. It's just... Uh, I don't know, man. Bucky's so old, too. Like... <laughs> Where does his story go from here? Because he doesn't really have anybody anymore. Like, uh, you know, Cap is basically an old man at this point. Uh, so Bucky, he's just kind of this man who's not used to the time, you know. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It's weird. Um, I I just want to see a like a, a ending scene where. Bucky goes to see Cap at uh like the end of the show. That would be good. What if uh what if we find Cap in like some type of retirement home? <laughs> yeah, that would be super sad, yeah. Just just the name of the home be like, you know, the Super Acres or something like that. Super Acres. <laughs> um I mean, do you think we'll ever see like Chris Evans fully take Take the Captain America back? No. No? I think he's, he's done, done with it? He's done. I think if anybody came back, uh, God, it, 
It's really weird because I don't want him to come back after the way they ended his story, but Robert Downey Jr. has apparently been hurting for a paycheck since he flopped on Doolittle. How could you be hurting for a paycheck at being like he, a a big movie star? You know, like how, what do you do with your money? He made like two hundred million dollars from Iron Man to like Avengers Endgame, like especially towards the end, like in Civil War, he got paid more than Chris Evans, and that wasn't yeah, even like his he, movie. You gotta be um, just uh, unresponsible with your with your big money if you if you need a paycheck like well, that. I'm not sure he's hurting for a paycheck, but there's a lot of reports out there that said he misses, like, you know, doing something where he knows he's going to make a lot of money from the box office and everything. Wait, I guess he just misses guaranteed money. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what that's what these superhero uh, things are. I mean, it is guaranteed money. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, don't, I didn't even see Doodle. Did you see it? No. See, that's why he doesn't have any money, because people like us aren't going to go see it. Well, maybe if he makes, like, another action movie, you know, I'll go see it. Oh, he's too old to make an action movie. Well, I mean... Sherlock Holmes? He, yeah, I'll say Sherlock Holmes <laughs> uh, uh, is, is coming, like, that... Are they still filming that, or...? I, I don't think they're filming. I know, supposedly, 3 is going to happen, so... Yeah, I really like the second one. I actually have not seen the first one. <laughs> But the second one was really good. The first one is better than the second, man. All right, well, then I have to watch it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I heard he's also going to... Uh, I heard he's in talks to take a DC role. Oh, like what? Like a villain or something. He wants to try something different. Wow. Did you, did you hear that uh, Robert Pattinson's is Batman is going to be taking Ben Affleck's role in the new, uh, like, a new Justice League? Um, no, but it's not surprising because I know they're still trying to interconnect everything. Uh, Flash's movie will probably put it all together. That's crazy. If they can ever, you know, get the Flash movie off the ground. I'm looking through the uh, this article that I saw about it. But I mean, they what whatever they do. I I know they recently uh, canceled uh, Warner Brothers canceled. What movie was it? The um, their big like um, celestial team up movie. I guess it, it was because I mean people are t- comparing it to the Eternals. Oh, I don't know. But I um, I yeah, it, was, it it was supposed to it was supposed to be kind of like a dark side type of type of thing going on and um yeah they so they canceled it and it just it, i mean it, it just seems like warner brothers has no clue on what they want to do with their with their superhero properties yeah that new report actually said all the new like dc films would be a part of their interconnected universe <laughs> um i don't know and speaking of dc uh did you see the Red Band trailer for the new Suicide Squad. Yeah, that one actually looks really good. Yeah, it, I mean it looks good. The the uh, other Suicide Squad movie looked good, but I mean, I, I probably trust James Gunn a little more. That's true. I, I mean, I, from what from what James Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy, and yeah, like of course, it's 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 got to be good. I mean, what you got. Aegis Elba, uh, John Cena, and uh, well, Pete Davidson. Dude. I mean, it's going to be funny. John Cena. I mean, he has some pretty weird roles here and there, but that his role as like Peacemaker looks really funny. He's like, I wake Ooh. up in the morning and I just, God, I long for peace so much. I'll kill a hundred men if it means that the world can live in peace. And then uh, what was that? Wasn't that little joke that they had about uh, on that on that island eating a bunch of digs? Yeah, that was so funny. He was like, he was like, uh, he's like, I'll eat a hundred if it means that. I, I <laughs> and then uh, 
they were like, why would you, why would you, uh, why would somebody put a bunch of dicks on this island? He's like, I don't know about Crazy Man and what they do. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so it, it should be good. Who who is he's just Elba playing? I I really haven't looked up like the cast and what and what they're playing and everything. I can't remember what he's playing, but I know um, like Sylvester Stallone showed up in the trailer as King Shark. Like nobody knew that he was voicing him. Oh, that's that's Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> King Shark. That's that's great. Um, oh, man. God, I can't remember Idris Elba. But I just think it's weird that, like, people are being recast and stuff, but Harley Quinn is still played by Margot Robbie. But, I mean, well, of course, you wouldn't change Harley Quinn, right? Because, I mean, Margot Robbie does a really great job as her, but it's just weird. They say uh, Bloodsport. That's who he is. Bloodsport, yeah. Yeah, because James Gunn didn't want to, like, recast anybody. They wanted he wanted to be like their own version. Oh, what do you mean? Because Idris Elba was supposed to basically recast Will Smith as Deadshot. Oh, okay. Um, but I mean, there's a there's a new Captain Boomerang, right? Or is it the same guy playing Captain Boomerang? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Because uh, who I didn't uh, Jai Courtney play Captain Boomerang in the. And Suicide Squad, Squad, the first one? I can't remember. <laughs> give, it, give us a look up real quick. We'll hit y'all with this look up. Suicide Squad. Captain Boomerang. Uh, Jai Courtney did play him. And I mean, I, I, I don't think the new Captain Boomerang is him. Let's see. Sorry for the long pause, everybody. We, we we have to we have to make sure we're right on this show. Sometimes, a lot of times we're wrong, but sometimes I mean, but sometimes we want to be right. So they say it doesn't look like he's in the trailer, but a lot of people say that he actually returns as Captain Boomerang in the sequel. Oh well, never mind. I I I, cause I thought I saw Captain Boomerang in the in the trailer. But um, I didn't know whether or not that was him still. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. But um, I, what do you think about them just, like, basically using uh, Harley Quinn to – she's basically the connective tissue to, to all of DC movies right now. Yeah. I mean, hey, she's, like, the only good thing they have going. Pretty much. That um, that movie with her, the the – Canaries movie, what what's it what was it called? I didn't even see it. The Harley Quinn movie, you didn't watch it? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Wow, man. I thought it was Birds it was, of Prey or something. Birds of Prey, yeah, there we go. That's what it's called. It's it had a really long name before before they just changed it to Birds of Prey. But um yeah, I thought it was really good. I should probably watch it. It's I think it still might be on HBO Max. I might give it a might give it a watch. But, um, man, we, we've talked a lot about some comic books. <laughs> um, what, uh, what else we got? What else we got, dog? Man, I don't even know. We've got, you know, we've got the, the latest all-star news for everybody who's a big MLB fan. The NCAA game is finally set. We got Gonzaga. And Baylor heading to the chip this coming Monday. So, um, God, I can't remember if uh, Gonzaga and Baylor is um, the Monday this airs. I think it is. Oh, it's, it's tomorrow? Yeah. Wow. Um, but, yeah, that that game between um, Gonzaga and UCLA, was it was crazy. It's crazy. It. It is Monday night. Wow, so about nine twenty Eastern it looks like. Right. So I mean hey, Gonzaga's going for that perfect season. Baylor's trying to mess him up. You got any type of prediction? 
you know, I mean, I don't watch a lot of college basketball, but they're saying that Gonzaga team is special. And I mean, if if that half court press shot to to win against UCLA is any indication, it's gonna be hard to stop them. Yeah, I um, I really would appreciate the story of Gonzaga going undefeated, but I feel like the cards are in the making. Um, and I'm a better predictor of football than I am basketball. As most listeners know, I correctly called the Super Bowl in most of the playoffs, unlike most of my colleagues and guests on the show. So, uh, but basketball, I feel like Baylor's going to take them tomorrow. Man. All right. Well, it's set. I'm, I'm, I'm Gonzaga, you're Baylor. We'll check in with you all next week and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to discuss the All-Star game a little bit. Uh, vaccines are coming up. Everybody is kind of getting in line to take their vaccine. Uh, Georgia's got a new voting wall. Um, kind of restricts voting. They take away absentee be- or, uh, drop-off locations. Uh, there's some more ID requirements. And that led to a pretty big uprising. And now the MLB took away their... Game and draft out of Atlanta. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a big hit for Atlanta because I mean people call baseball America's pastime. I don't I don't see how it's that popular. I don't think baseball is very boring myself. But um, you don't think it's boring, or you don't think it's you think it's boring? No, I think it's boring. Oh yeah. I mean, I'd rather go watch a game than watch one on TV because I mean. I I very easily just turn it off, but um, but yeah, like if if it was gonna be a lot of people, which it probably would be for the All Star game, that's a that's a big hit for Atlanta. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really weird. Uh, I mean, we talked about it a little before the show. I know that some of our views are a little different. Uh, we both agree that like voter ID isn't you know, a bad thing because you probably should have an ID if you're going to vote like in the country. But I know a lot of people, uh, are upset because they're dropping off locations where it's basically, uh, like suppression, like you were saying. And, uh, you're taking away these locations where people can go and drop off ballots. So, you know, I think they went from, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they went from like 90 something in that, in that, uh, metropolitan area to, to like 26. I I mean, my numbers may be wrong, but I I feel like it went from a very large number to a very comparatively small number. Yeah. Um, and you know, especially in the metropolitan area, you're probably more accurate about it than me. So I would, I'd probably lean towards agreeing with you in that it, if you're taking away like 70 plus locations where people were going to vote, I, I would label it, you know, as the suppression. It's just that a lot of people, I think, underestimate social media now. Um, so <laughs> when Georgia does stuff like this, you know, um, it can cost business. And so now that uprising from social media, uh, you know, Georgia just cost themselves probably a few, if not like a hundred million dollars in revenue for that All Star weekend. Yeah, and all in the name of we lost an election and we want to try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, I um, I wouldn't underestimate social media. Anyways, Georgia's been Georgia's been kind of picking the fence for a while. Um, if you recall, a couple years ago. Uh, there was, God, what was it? It might have been last year or the year before. They literally had um, some type of law where it said churches could discriminate and businesses could too based off religious views and what have you. Um, and Disney straight up said that they would take their filming business out of the state. Oh, and, yeah. You know, that, that's like billions of dollars for the state. And uh, Kemp, you know, if it wasn't for Disney saying that, he was probably going to sign the bill. But as soon as Disney said that, he's like, no, I'm going to veto it. <laughs> like, you can't, you, in in these day and ages, you can't really get away with 
those like crazy conservative views because I mean like that's not they're losing majority now you know what I'm saying and I mean there's still those those uh conservative people that are that are in power that have been for a long time that are that are trying to do these things but like with the power of social media people pe- people's voices are louder than ever so yeah and what's funny is uh, a lot of people will forget but obama had said you know democrats and liberals they're not they're not blameless in this game either because they also oh, no. They also do gerrymandering, and they do whatever they can to try and stay in the political seats. Uh, oh, yeah. It's just that when something is so asinine, you know, and so crazy that social media and businesses can pick up on it, uh, yeah, they're not going to get away with it. <laughs> yeah, like, I, like uh, this is what I feel like. Um, conservatives are more, you know, outright and, w- like, you know, it's more pronounced when... when something crazy happens you know what i'm saying but but uh i feel like liberals and like you know democrats there they try to they try to make it more secret in their in their corruption yeah because you don't you don't hear much about them but it happens i mean i mean dang uh you know the governor in new york cuomo he was taking a hit like he was taking a beating for all that uh elderly um the elder deaths from covid and how he yeah. basically was putting them back into the nursing homes just to die. Um, and then all of a sudden sexual you know, allegations come up out of nowhere because I guess they thought that <laughs> they could beat up, they could, you know, the media would forget about sexual allegations within a couple of weeks if that was taking, you know, the place over the uh, elder COVID deaths. Yeah, well, we haven't forgotten about either, so. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I mean... They haven't covered them in over a week on that big CNN, so they're trying to let the world forget. I guess, but I mean, I, I don't get my news from major networks, so most of mine comes from like Twitter and Facebook now. Yeah, I'd say I'm a, I'm an internet dweller, so Facebook has to be fact checked more than Twitter, surprisingly. So I don't know. I just feel like in, in, on Facebook, you like. People just say absolute crazy things, and then a lot more people tend to believe it. But I feel like on Twitter, people are more skeptical, and like if somebody says some crazy stuff, then people know to 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 doubt before they believe. Yeah, um, and this might piss off like a good chunk of my family down south, but you know if you're watching or listening, again, you know I got my mark of the beast, so I'm ready for the end of times, like. <laughs> I'm ready. Mark of the Beast right here. Give it another three weeks and I'll get my second dose. So, you know, we're 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 ready for the end out here. It's they done microchipped me and everything. I, I already um, feel like my DNA's been altered. Uh God, I'm getting superpowers at this point. I saw this I saw this tweet and it was um it said I got my vaccination three days ago. And this just magically appeared there, and it was like, I don't know if you've seen it, it was a tattoo of Bill <laughs> Gates with, like, the old, like, windows, no. like, uh, like theme behind him. Like, it was so funny. Yeah, because I see people, you know, down south where they believe anything, uh, talking about, oh, don't get the vaccine, like, they'll microchip you, or, you know, uh, that's like the mark of the beast. They talk about this in a certain book of the Bible. Like, okay, I'm sure that's what everybody was saying when they got their flu shot for the first time, too, back in, like, oh, yeah, the 1920s. Man. That's the mark of the beast. But, oh, um, speaking of the pandemic, of course, um, have you seen the, that trailer for that, uh, I forget what it's called, so many so many days, 79 days or something like that, the, the documentary about the lockdown in Wuhan? No. Man, I mean it looks it looks pretty good. It's gonna be on Paramount Plus. So another <laughs> another streaming service for you to get if you wanna watch it. I just think well, I've got Paramount Plus currently, but only for the month long free trial. After that I'm canceling. But oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um 
Because I got it so, you know, the kids could watch that new Spongebob movie when it came out or whatever. Was it was it good? No. No. It was literally, uh, they basically retcon the entire Spongebob storyline. Um, and it's based, it's like a two hour movie, but an hour of it. So like half of it is strictly advertisement for their new spinoff series about the little, kids. No, the little kid. Yeah, because there's there's a part in the movie where they're reminiscing about their childhood, and it's just basically it's a backdoor pilot for that series. Really? <laughs> so no, it's not a good movie, and I hate how they change the storylines because SpongeBob doesn't meet Is it Sandy. Funny though? Like, no, no, it's not. Um, SpongeBob doesn't meet Sandy until he's an adult, like most of us would know. But uh, they basically change all that and say everybody's known each other since they were kids. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I hey, if you... did you did you hear about them uh, taking uh, like two episodes of SpongeBob off of uh, like out of rotation or whatever? Yeah, because it's about a virus, and they thought it was too close to like the current pandemic. Which one did they? Which what episode is about a virus? No, no, no! It's for the new season. Oh no! And then they took the—I thought they thought they took the panty raid episode off. The what? The panty raid episode, dude. No, I didn't see that news. Like they—they uh—they stopped—they stopped airing two like older episodes of SpongeBob. That's messed up. It is. But I'm sorry. We—I was talking about the 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 pandemic documentary and we got to SpongeBob. I Paramount mean, plus, right? I just get, I mean, I know that I've always been the more conservative one. Uh, even when guests are on this show and everything, but, uh, for all my talk about hating masks and everything else, uh, I'm still out here doing it like, because I want life to go back to normal. And it just yeah. makes me upset that there was a lot of states that didn't want to do all this stuff because Wuhan, they're they're basically already back to normal over there. Like, China's making a ton of money in the box office now. Nobody's really having to wear masks unless they're sick. And uh, I feel like if there was a better response from our country, we could be in a similar situation. But now we have to wait until, like, a good chunk of the population gets vaccinated. Uh, so... Uh, I mean, it kind of sucks. I mean, thankfully, stuff is starting to ease up. Like the CDC just said, if you're fully vaccinated, um, technically, you should be low risk, you know, to start traveling and everything again. Yeah, it's it's crazy for for um, for a country that's that that's like one one nation uh, under God and everything, and like uh, America strong and stuff like that. We don't we don't band together to do absolutely anything, ever. Yeah. So, so we end up having all these cases, all these deaths, like the most in the world, and I mean people it's, people don't care. Yeah, they're uh, it's crazy. I just hope that soon, you know, we'll have a good chunk of the vaccine in uh the population and. Uh, the deaths are going down, I think, because of vaccination, um, uh, efforts, so, pretty good, pretty good, uh, taking way too long to get here, it should have been better, but, yeah, so hopefully next week, I'll be able to report that I got my first vaccination shot, so, I can hold up my car too, yeah, I wanted Johnson & Johnson, but, eligibility just opened up, and, uh, we basically just, you took what we could get, so. Like, is the Johnson Johnson, like, is that, like, mass available, like the Moderna and the Pfizer ones? It's supposed to be, uh, but it's only in, you know, select locations, so depends on availability and everything. We actually went through a drive through site that was run by FEMA, so the only type of doses they had were Moderna, but it was actually the only place where I could get an appointment for me and Tiff to get vaccinated, so... That's I was good. like, well, we'll just take what we can get. Yeah. So uh, you guys go back in two weeks, right? 
No, with Moderna, you have to wait 28 days. So my next appointment is uh, May 3rd, I think. Oh, all right. Pfizer, you can wait 21 days. Um, so, yeah, we have to wait a little longer, but it's okay. All right, then. Awkward pause. Here we go. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, I would say I, I just I just gave it a smile. So so if anybody's watching, they they just they, they got to see my my nice smile. I guess. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I I'm, I don't I don't have much left for the for the show. I don't know about you. No, it's been a decent week. Been a decent week. We'll uh. We'll probably uh bring a guest on this week. I pondered bringing somebody on for today's show but kind of got it last minute so you know is what it is uh but you know hopefully you listeners have enjoyed the two originals for the past few weeks and maybe we get a guest on here sh- here shortly yeah absolutely maybe hopefully next week we'll be all right goals for next week first vaccination shot bring a guest on to unheard of so Hopefully we can deliver, or I can deliver the first part, and then hopefully we can deliver the the second part to you guys. Yeah, and um, we are so excited and thankful that everybody continues to listen. Um, Our first episode aired on June 12th, I believe. So we're getting pretty close to uh, a year of unheard of. And yeah, and I feel like we're only getting better and better. So, who knows? Maybe next year we'll be a we'll be a global conglomerate. Maybe, maybe, maybe next year we finally get a studio. I get ABG to move out west or something. I would love it. I really would. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, closing thoughts for the week. If you're eligible for a vaccine, trust me. Okay. They're not microchipping you. The government does not need to do anything to track you. They've got all your information with the little device you carry in your pocket every single day. Okay? So, the government's got everything they need on you. So, don't worry. Just go take a freaking shot. Okay? We do it all the time. Um, You will not, you know, have any... Major side effects. They're not going to alter your DNA. It's not the mark of the beast. Just go get vaccinated. Let's get life back to normal. I, for one, would enjoy, you know, going uh, to the movies on opening weekend again. Huge crowd everywhere. Like, big action movie. Um, So, let's just get the shot and get our lives back. All right, well, I guess for, for me, I hope everybody had a good Easter, of course. Like, uh, like I said, and I hope you guys all, all have a good week, everybody who's listening and or watching. And, of course, I want to say thank you to everybody once again, like I, like I always do, for for supporting us and, and taking the time out to, to listen to the two, to two guys just rambling to each other for, for about an hour. And um, I don't know. Uh, wear a mask. Yes, wear a mask. Wear a mask. Um, and you can find me on the Twitter at Jared Evans. Hope you tune in for my zero tweets this week. And uh, me personally, you can find me on Twitter at Young without the O underscore ABG. Um, I've been putting out some some real banger driving tweets. You know, I, I do a lot of driving for work now, so like, just be on the lookout for those. A lot of, lot of driving opinion tweets. And uh, for us, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at I almost said Young without the O um, <laughs> at Unheard underscore of Pod. Uh, Facebook, search us up. We're Unheard of. YouTube, search us up. Follow the link. Unheard of. You know, Unheard of everywhere. Eventually, unheard of is going to be as big as Disney. I said it. I'm saying it here now. So true. One day. (laughs) 
Um, so, yeah, you know, another good week. Back in the HD video for you. Um, hope everybody enjoys the new intro, the new logo. I, uh, you know, I worked not too hard on it, but, you know, I hope everybody enjoys it. I like the, I like the new tone of it. And, um, for all of you again, you know, we love you, we hear you, and we hope you hear us. Hear it unheard of. And once again, I'm Jared. And I'm Arthur. And this was... Unheard of.